In this video, I'm going to show you how to bulk load questions into Adobe Captivate. So I've done this video before, but I thought, you know, it's been enough time since the last time I covered this particular topic that it might need a refresh. Uh, in this case here, I was uh, using a previous version of Adobe Captivate. So I'd like to show you with the latest and greatest version here. We're talking about the GIFT or GIFT format uh, file, which you can import into your Captivate project and basically pre-populate all of your quiz questions. This is a really useful benefit because of course, if you can write your quiz questions in a regular text document, in the case of Windows, you would write it in Notepad, or on a Mac, you could write it in text edit. You can easily share that with your stakeholders and your subject matter experts, and they can suggest changes and approve the list of questions that you've written. Now there is a specific syntax that needs to be used. And if you take a look at the uh, link that I've put in the description, this is actually a document on the Moodle LMS site, which provides some details around how you can write these. But I'm gonna give you some examples here today. So first of all, let's take a look at my desktop here. I've created a folder with single example gift files in here. Let's start with one of the simplest ones, and that's a true false, where you simply create a title for your question slide encapsulated in double colons. That denotes that this is the title. And then just write up regular text for, uh, in this case here, your true false question stem. And you simply follow it with parentheses that contain either a capital T for true or a capital F for false. So if I go ahead and go back to Adobe Captivate here, let's create a new project. And you simply would click on quiz and select import gift format file. Select, of course, the, uh, the from my desktop here, I've got that folder. Let's choose the true false example. Normally you'd have maybe uh, 10 or 20 or, or dozens and dozens of examples of questions in a single file here. But for the purposes of the video, I've just got one in each example gift file. So let's open this up. It automatically applies it to your master slide for your particular Captivate theme that you're using. And everything is all set up, ready to go. It looks good. Now, the next type of question that we can look at here is multiple choice, probably the most common. In this example here, we can see that we have uh, our question title up here, the stem. And within those same uh, curly brackets or parentheses, we have all the correct answers. This is a multiple answer, multiple choice with one distractor here. So which oceans does Canada's borders uh, shores borders, shores border. <laughs> Let's import that in and see what we get there. So import uh, gift format file, multiple choice. And of course, if there was only one correct answer, I would get radio buttons. But in this case, I've chosen uh, a multiple answer, multiple choice question. And of course, Indian Ocean is my distractor in this case here. Let's go back to the folder here. Now you can also create multiple choice with unique feedback as well. So in this case here, here's a single answer. As you can see, the correct answer to this question is 10 provinces and three territories. And then I follow it with the number sign or hashtag for you modern uh, Twitter people. Uh, correct, and then of course the feedback that I wish to give. Now, the advantage of doing this is that I can create unique feedback for each one of my distractors. So close, there is one more province than that, or close, there is one more territory than that, or both, of course, in this case here. So if I import that question in, let's go to quiz, import gift file, and we'll choose unique feedback. It looks a little funky at first because these answers all get tossed in the upper right-hand corner but you can resize these captions and capture uh, you know, the 
look and feel of the rest of your, your course. Essentially what's happening for those that are unaware of this feature, uh, with, you, with your answers selected, you can go to your properties inspector, choose advanced answer option, and have it show feedback message. So similar to uh, essentially the actions associated with success or last attempt, you can set unique actions and unique feedback for each of these answers here. And that can be useful in an example like this where you want to give them feedback that's specific to the answer that they've chosen. Next, of course, we have fill in the blank. And here's an example of a standard fill in the blank. We've got our question title up there. And what you do is you use the parentheses as the markers for your blank. You could have a single answer where there's only one correct answer. I decided to include some alternate spelling. So any one of these is correct. I'm not going to penalize them for spelling Ottawa incorrectly. But if we import this now, here's what we get. So let's bring in fill in the blank, open that up. So now we see Ottawa is the capital city of Canada. And if you click on the Ottawa that has the underline there, you'll see all the different possible correct answers there. That works well as, as well. So let's take a look at the next example here. We've got fill in the blank with distractors. So this is kind of an interesting concept, uh, not one that you'd necessarily expect, but here, here's our blank, which includes the distractors, Ottawa, Vancouver, Montreal, is the largest city in Canada, in brackets, population there. Now, you would expect this to be a standard fill in the blank, but Captivate recognizes that it can't really do the distractors with a fill in the blank unless you choose the drop down option. So what it does instead is it treats it like a multiple choice, but it writes the stem in a unique way. So let's do that and take a look at what this looks like. So you get, you know, underscore, 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 underscore is the largest city in Canada population. And then you get a standard multiple choice question. And you, of course, have to choose the correct answer. Don't forget, of course, you can choose shuffle answer if you want Toronto to be uh, a, B, C, or D, depending on who's running this particular uh, assessment here. Next, we'll take a look at the last one here that I'll show you today, and that's matching. A little bit more complicated to write out. You simply, within your parentheses, you go equals, and then two comparisons that match. So the Liberal Party of Canada is an example of social liberalism. And how you create that matching is you just use a hyphen and a right-facing arrow or um, chevron, if you will. And this, uh, you just simply put in all the matches there. And of course, when you import that, there's one thing to remember to do. And that's, of course, to shuffle the first column there. So let's bring that in. See, we've got our matching here. And don't forget to shuffle column one. So again, check out the link in the description to go to the document where I learned about these different ways of importing different types of questions. And hopefully you can benefit by this and be able to share your questions with your stakeholders and your subject matter experts before actually building your Captivate project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.